Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Elizabeth Lake in Summit County in Utah, three Bigfoot were watched for 10 minutes as they played in a meadow by Mr. and Mrs. Robert Melka and Sergeant and Mrs. Fred Rosenberg. The creature also ran around at high speed. On to the next one. This happened on a hunting expedition in Farmington Canyon in Utah. There were four in the hunting party. Everyone was away from camp hunting. There are two lakes where this occurred. The sun began to go down to set. It was an archery hunt, so normally you would sit wherever you were because that's when the deer or elk come out. Every hunter's hope are that he is going to see something before it gets dark. On this particular evening, nothing seemed to come out from the landscape. So I proceeded to move slowly back down the trail toward camp, which was set up just below the lakes. It was too dark now to see any of my other hunting companions. No moon was in the sky, just stars. I had positioned myself above the upper lake. I knew the area quite well. As I proceeded to go back, I had to cross a little creek that came out through a marsh below the upper lake. But being that it was dark, I couldn't really see the trail. But I could hear the water gurgling in front of me. As I came to this spot in the trail, I knew I had to make the right moves or I would end up in the water. I sat there trying to adjust my eyes to see where to make the next step. While I was standing there for a few seconds, I started to hear a low, growling noise. I have never heard a noise like this. I never believed in Bigfoot. When I heard the noise, I thought it was one of my companions playing with my mind hiding in the bushes. So I not very loudly muttered under my breath, Steve, Mike, is that you? Not getting any answer, I could hear the trees start to thrash and that noise came back again with a deeper growl, almost like a moan, low in pitch. As I stood there, it seemed like an eternity, but was only about five minutes. I knew I had to be making a move. I had to take that trail that led through the bushes. With my bow in one hand, I held my breath and jumped to big leaps across the creek, landed half in the water and yelled out a couple of loud words and ran through those bushes. I never stopped until I reached camp. When I got back to camp, there was nobody there. So I put my bow against the tree and proceeded to get a flashlight out of the tent. Within a few minutes, everyone was back at camp. We all talked about what we had seen and what we had heard. Then I talked about what I had seen and what I had heard and everyone had a hard time believing my story. They thought I probably heard a cougar, but I've been hunting for many years, and I know a cougar when I hear one. About half an hour later, another friend pulled up in his truck. He was going to spend the night with us. He brought his dog. We fixed something to eat and then crawled into the tent. We told a few stories and then drifted off to sleep. About the middle of the night, the dog started to growl in the tent. It started to growl at first, and we tried to calm him down. It was pitch black outside, except for the stars in the sky. The dog's growl began to pick up. We tried to hold the dog down. Then it started to growl and bark. We finally got the dog down on the tent floor when we could hear something outside the tent. Something then brushed the side of our tent. The dog immediately jumped up and started to bark. The dog barked for about 30 minutes, and then it seemed to settle down. The area where we had pitched the tent was in tall grass. There wasn't much dirt or barren trail. The next morning, we inspected for tracks to find out what it was, but the grass was so tall that we found nothing. 
The noise that I heard that night has made me a believer of what lurks in the woods. The first was at 8.45 p.m. The second was at 2 a.m. It was heavily wooded, thick underbrush with two small lakes nearby. On to the next one. Eight hikers spot elusive Bigfoot in high unitas. Two North Ogden men and six young companions said today said they watched a gorilla-like creature in the high Unita mountains that matched reports of Bigfoot. Jay Barker, who has hunted big game animals for years in the area, said the creature was estimated at being 10 feet tall. He said that it was covered with a white mantle of hair over its shoulders and halfway down its huge body. The lower portion of the creature was dark colored, said Mr. Baker, who said after it spotted his party, it ambled off on its hind legs. Mr. Baker and his two sons, Brett 12 and Danny 6, had hiked to the top of the ridge between Pass Lake and Cuberant Basin at the head of Weber River drainage. They reached the top of the ridge at noon Monday and made contact with Larry Beeson and his three sons, Scott, 14, Michael, 11, David, 5, and Paul, 14. About that time, they looked down upon a small alpine lake about one half mile below them and saw the creature standing on its edge. At first, Mr. Baker thought he was looking at an elk. Then the creature turned to look up at the party after a couple of the boys had knocked rocks loose that rolled. What are we looking at? said an amazed Mr. Beeson as the creature turned and walked off on its hind legs. Mr. Baker said the distance was too far to get a good look at the creature's face, but he said it moved through scattered trees, turning its head back to look at them from time to time. He said they watched it for some four minutes while it covered about one half a mile through the scattered trees and then disappeared into heavy timber. Startled and almost dumbfounded, the group stared. That thing is standing on two legs, said one member of the amazed party as they looked. Mr. Baker said the party went down to where they had seen the creature after it disappeared. They found paw-like imprints in the earth, but the ground was too hard and dry to leave a clear imprint. He said the paw mark was huge, and resembled that made by a palm and toe. The party followed the path of the creature to the timber and found other scruff marks on the rocks and in the dry ground and grasses. Mr. Baker said that the group thought better about following the hairy creature into the heavy timber. Excited and unable to sleep, Mr. Baker said he and his boys were too tired after their experience to make the return trip of over six miles back to their camper near Path Lake. They spent Monday night huddled about a campfire at Fish Lake near where the creature had been seen and came out Tuesday. Mr. Baker estimated the elevation of the small lake where the creature was seen at about 12,000 feet. It was above the timber line. He also said a sheep herder in the Gold Hills area below, Arlo Fawcett of Roy, reported he had been unable to get a sheep to stay in the area where the creature was seen. Mr. Fawcett reportedly said he would take his sheep into the area to graze and they would beat him back to camp, apparently filled with fear. The herder also said it's the first summer this has happened. It's also the first summer that he has failed to see or hear any coyotes in the area. Utah wildlife officials informed of the incident said they will ride into the area on horses to check the area. Jerry Dalberg, conservation officer, Northern Region Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, when informed of the creature, said the description fits a grizzly bear to a T, all except for walking upright for such a long distance. Officer Dahlberg says he plans a horseback trip into the area over the Labor Day weekend. Mr. Beeson said when they reached the area where the hairy creature was seen, they found the carcass of a rabbit that had been completely skinned by a human and partially eaten. On to the next one. In Wasatch County in Utah, Mike and his younger brother, Lynn, had gone fishing. 
They had been in the area many times before with their father and other family members. They arrived at their intended campsite at about 7.30. They both had noticed once they entered the canyon, they saw no more wildlife, deer, birds, or anything. Mike remembers having an eerie feeling from the very moment they started down into Timber Canyon. He recalled hearing no noises and commented to Lynn about this and the weird feelings he had of something or someone watching them. They had forgotten worms, so both went out into the willows and were digging worms, all the while feeling like something was watching them. Mike said the hair on the back of his neck was standing on end whenever he looked around to see if they could see anyone watching them. They returned to the truck, lit a lantern, and put it on top of the truck and proceeded to light a fire to roast a hot dog on. His brother and he were sitting on a log, and he noticed his brother had opened a beer and was not drinking it, and was just staring at something, and had ceased to talk to him. He looked in the direction his brother was looking, and saw a Sasquatch trying to sneak from off the road to a clump of willows, and then proceeded to peer at them by holding the willows off to one side and leaning over so the Sasquatch could get a good view of them. Mike was so shocked he lost his balance and fell from the log, and in getting back up, noticed the Sasquatch creeping behind the willows, moving to the west and south. Mike and his brother then lost visual sight of it and could hear very loud thrashing noises of the Sasquatch going through the creek and willows and up the canyon to the west and south of the campsite. Mike said he did not smell anything and figured it was because of the smoke from the fire. Mike estimated the whole sighting and noises lasted two minutes. His younger brother wanted to stay there and sleep in the camper shell, but Mike was impressed very strongly to leave and get out of there. It was dusk and almost dark on a moonless night. It was clear weather. It is a narrow canyon with a small stream in it with lots of willows and beaver ponds. There were timbered north slopes and sage and juniper on the south slopes. On to the next one. On the Mounty Cristo Highway, near Ogden in Cache County in Utah, I lived in Utah and my wife and kids went hunting in the mountains. We set up camp and we were a couple of days early for the season to start. My wife and I decided to go out and scout the area. We were going down a ridgeline and out stepped an animal. This time, I have a witness of seeing the creature. By the time we made it down to where it was, it was gone. Later that night, it snowed. During the night, I heard the animal going around our tent. The next morning, there were huge tracks going around our tent. We never seen or heard the animal again. There was a spring, which was the only water for a few miles. It was early morning, the first time, and about two in the afternoon the second time. I now live in Washington. At work one day, we had a new hire, and we got to talking, and he was from Utah. I told him that I lived in Utah for a while. He asked if I hunted or fished. I told him that I hunted up on Monte Cristo. He told me that there were several sightings of Bigfoot up there. On to the next one. One Graves County witness alerted by the sound of breaking limbs one night in Mayfield, Kentucky claimed that he saw a large, hairy, black Bigfoot with small, glowing red eyes. Again, the terrified witness fled when the creature started to approach. But then, who can blame him? It smelled bad, too, the wife later reported. One evening about dark, my husband was taking tree limbs into the woods behind our house to discard them on an old dozer pile. He heard a noise that he assumed was a deer running through the underbrush. About this time, according to the wife, he noticed a foul odor like something dead. Looking out through the dense trees and brush, he saw a huge, dark-colored, hairy creature approaching him. It was bigger than him, the wife stated, and he is six feet tall, 180 pounds. At first, he thought it was a bear, she said, despite the red-colored eyes until he realized that there are no bears in that part of Kentucky. Badly frightened, he came running out of the woods. 
he told me what he saw and that he wasn't going back to see what it was. I have never seen my husband that scared before in my life. She summed up her husband's description of the beast as a large, hairy, black animal with long hair and glowing red eyes that smelled really bad. The incident allegedly took place in a wooded area containing a gravel pit and a large lake. The animal apparently made no sounds except for the underbrush crushing and snapping beneath its feet. Again, we hear testimony describing the sound of loudly snapping, cracking limbs wherever the creature walks. One might think that such a huge beast would be easy enough to track by simply following the trail of broken trees and limbs. But such is not the case. Such destruction of local fauna on that scale strangely is never seen when the area is visited later, leading one to theorize that the often reported tree breaks may be an auditory phenomenon and not a physical one. Graves County is one of the state's largest counties and Mayfield, the county seat, has a population of just over 10,000 people, at least four more of whom would join the list of Graves County Bigfoot witnesses. Years later, in October of 2008, four juvenile witnesses claimed to have had the most awesome yet intense encounter ever. While out shooting airsoft gun in the woods near Simpsonia, it was just after dawn when they arrived. It was early morning, and it was a group of us not expecting anything like that to happen, one witness later said. We were patrolling the woods, practicing for airsoft wars. Chanley, a kid in our group, saw something and brought our attention to a moss-colored beast. We immediately pulled up our scopes to get a better look. One of us dismissed it after firing near it a couple of times. We then reloaded, and when we were leaving the location to go deeper into the woods, one of us noticed that it had moved to a new location. We then hauled our butts out of the woods and re-examined the area later. We found nothing. 13-year-old Jordan F., along with a cousin and two friends, observed this creature in October, when he was 11 years old. The three were up early that day, just after dawn, exploring some wooded property in Graves County near Simpsonia, owned by his cousin's parents, and were shooting their airsoft rifles when his friend Cheney first noticed the thing positioned in the brush about 25 yards, 75 feet from them. He yelled, look, and the other two boys turned to see it. Through their rifle scopes, they could see that it was a large, hairy, man-like creature. Jordan said it was covered with hair, which he described as moss green. The creature also had glowing red eyes, even though it was daytime. It appeared to be crouching down in an ape-like fashion, he said, with its waist resting mostly on one leg. One of its arms was stretched out in front of it, knuckles to the ground. All three noticed a strange smell, like a mixture of rotten meat and urine. The group, in true Kentucky fashion, fired their plastic bullets at the object, and the thing moved around a little like it was irritated. As they were about to go into a patch of woods, they noticed that the object had moved to a different location. Oddly, it was only then that the youth became alarmed and decided to beat a hasty retreat back home. When they examined the area later, they could find no tracks, hair, or any other trace of the creature. Jordan described the terrain as being a small, thickly wooded valley near a swampy area with nearby creeks and streams. Interestingly, Jordan and his cousin, Clayton, seem to be magnets when it comes to unexplained phenomena. In addition, they had also seen a dark figure up in a tree, which he described as monkey-like, thin, and covered with mangy-looking fur on several separate occasions in both McCracken and Livingston counties. On to the next one. Another Bigfoot-type creature was seen by a child in Litchfield, Kentucky, near Nolan Lake on Interstate 65. When I was a kid, my grandparents had a little bitty camper at a campsite at Nolan Lake, she later claimed. One summer, my father took the family, me, my sister, and mother to my grandparents' site for a little vacation. One evening, as it was becoming dusk, 
I remember standing inside the camper, looking out the screen door at my father, who was cooking at the grill. The campsite sat at the top of a hill in a wooded area. The woods consisted mostly of old growth deciduous trees, so there weren't really any evergreens or shrub type trees like cedars, which could really block your view. I was looking out the door at my father, who was on my left, and eventually, out of boredom I guess, I ended up scanning the right and down the hill into the woods. I remember seeing about midway down the hill, something that caught my eye. You know how when you think you see something and in a split second, your mind says, did I just see what I thought I saw? Well, that's what happened to me. Midway down the hill, partially hidden behind a tree, was this man thing. I could see his whole head, his right shoulder, and part of his leg coming out from behind the tree. It was grayish brown, and he was looking right at me. I looked away thinking I had to be imagining it, but when I looked back, it was still there. And I had no problem picking him out from the trees. At that point, my mother, who was cooking at the stove behind me, said something to me, and I turned around to talk to her. When I looked back outside, down the hill, it was gone. I kept looking through all the trees, but I couldn't find him. What I saw was big and burly, and it didn't make any sense that I can remember. It had a big, squarish head, kind of blocky with rounded corners, that looked like it sat right on its shoulders. I really don't recall seeing a neck. I could see a massive shoulder and a thick bicep. I could also see its chunky hip and a good portion of its thigh down to about its knees. All the rest was hidden behind the tree. The witness claims that she gets cold chills when she thinks of the figure she viewed all those years ago. She didn't tell her parents of the event because she was afraid they wouldn't believe her. The creature, according to her, was much taller than a man with shaggy gray-brown hair covering its entire body. If you have an encounter you would like to share, you can reach me by submitting it to the email in the description box down below. Also, if you would like to send in a physical letter of your encounter or any fan mail, I also have a P.O. box, which you can find in the description box down below. I love just hearing from all of you, so those options are available if you ever feel like reaching me. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!